in your prime, both of you, from baseline to baseline, straight sprint, who wins? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. When was my prime, mate? It was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm here with two-time NITO ATP Finals champion Leighton Hewitt and last year's finalist Dominic Team. The boys, thanks so much for joining me. Um, my first question to you, Dominic, is you've hit with Cruz Hewitt a couple of times in Australia. How did Cruz's game match up to his dad's? <laughs> Impressive. No, I, I, I was really impressed since um, not only Australia, but the first time I saw him, maybe I think Wimbledon last year. And well, I, I loved it because he, he was on court all day long. Having such a good attitude, such a good practice, just like he said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on to the uh, ATP Finals. It's the um, 50th anniversary of uh, the event this year. Starting with you, Ling, when, when, when did you first become aware of the ATP Finals? Uh, for me, I always knew about it more the Becker-Sampras era. Um, you know, and Agassi obviously coming up as well. And, and they were sort of the role models that I wanted to get an opportunity to one day play against. Um, but then a big goal for me in 2001, because it was coming to my home country where I got the opportunity to try and qualify for Sydney. So um, to go and experience playing the tour finals, um, our premier event on the, on the men's tour. Um, it's, it's something that all the players work so hard for and, and it's a massive relief once you get that tick that you've know you've passed the, the ranking stage where you're actually qualified for it. Um, it's a big relief, I think, for a lot of players and, and for me it was always a goal going into the start of any year. And likewise, Dominic, when did you first come aware of uh, ATP finals, probably watching on television when you were younger? Even when I came up on tour 2014, when I played my first full year at the end, I was watching it and I was telling myself how many points do you actually need to be there and uh, unbelievable, I probably will never make it and then uh, two years later, 2016, I, I qualified for the first time and luckily I was making it since then uh, every single year. And, and Leighton, you, you reflected on um, qualifying in Sydney, playing in your home country. Um, talk to us about that experience. Was, it, was there any you feel extra pressure competing at home? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, plus, going into 2001, it was a three-horse race, basically, to who could finish the year number one as well. Uh, so at the time, I hadn't got to world number one. I was number two after winning the US Open. Uh, Gustavo Curtin was number one, and then Andre Agassi was number three. And it was basically in each of our control. If we went out there and actually won the tour finals, we would finish number one. Um, and then it all sort of changed all of a sudden because I was able to win my round robin uh, group stage matches um, and the other two actually didn't qualify for the semi-finals. It, it was a weird feeling because I only had to win that last round robin match to, to clinch uh, the world number one for the final time uh, that year. But for me, it was one of the most special uh, experiences in my career and especially to do it uh, in my home country. And uh, obviously to have the, the trophy behind you, can we yeah. have a little that? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's nice crystal. It's bloody heavy too. <laughs> and Dominic, um, 2019, you beat Federer and Djokovic on the way to the final. Um, talk us through those wins and, and how much confidence that gives you going into 2020 ATP finals. Last year, I started amazing with the win over Roger, which is obviously always something special. And then was probably the best um, best of three match in my life against Novak. The finals against Stefanos was, was a special match because I guess it was one of the best atmosphere in a match where the big three or big four were not involved since a very long time. And uh, it was, I guess, a pretty important step into the future for, for the next gen, I would say. And Lane, you're still involved in the game in, in many different ways. Uh, when you watch the players today, how do you feel your game would have matched up? Yeah, I don't know. I probably need a, <laughs> a bit more strength out there. Uh, these guys club the ball, obviously, from the back of the court. Uh, what would be your strategy if you had to play 
late in tomorrow? Honestly, I, I, I don't know my tactics. I mean, I would, uh, would have loved to, to play against, against him and then maybe find a good tactic during the match. But uh, that's definitely one thing which, which, which I regret kind of that, that I could never face well, some idols I was growing up with. Okay, boys, to finish things up, we're going to have a little Nito ATP Finals trivia round. First question is, which player has won Nito ATP Finals the most times? Is it Lendl, Sampras, Djokovic or Federer? I think it's Federer. Correct. He's won six. Which was the first year that the ATP Finals was played in? Uh... 1970. Well done. <laughs> Which city has hosted NITO ATP finals the most times? Is it Hanover, Frankfurt, London or New York? It's definitely London or New York, but I think it's London. <laughs> Incorrect. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It will, be, it will be the 12th year in London this year, and New York hosted it 13 times. Leighton, um, who has the most uh, consecutive NITO ATP Finals wins? Is it Lendl, Nastasi, Federer or Djokovic? No Googling. No, I don't have my phone. Uh, I'll say Federer, but I don't know. <laughs> it's Djokovic. He's won, he won four in a row. Oh. Okay, to break the tie, we're going to do a Nito ATP Finals Guess the Grunt. Dominic? Guga. Guga. <laughs> He's right! Oh, that's too good. <laughs> so, Leighton, Dominic. Um, thanks so much for joining me. It's been great to chat to you. Dominic, play well the rest of the season. Um, look forward to catching up in, in London at the NITO ATP Finals. And late, um, all the best to you and your family. Stay safe and, and hope to catch up in 2021. Thanks, Ennis. All the best, Dominic. Thanks a lot. See you soon. <laughs>